Hey guys, it was all a dream here and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty, cool, awesome door hanger. Let's go. So here are the supplies and materials that are going to be needed for your door hanger. Um, so we have a hot glue gun, pencil, um, I purchased this uh, rope ribbon. Um, I also got these ribbons that I thought were really cute, this burlap, this pink and house tooth print. Um, you're going to need some acrylic paint and a paper plate. Uh, I purchased this shellac. Um, for you know to seal it off when I'm completely done with the project um, and I purchased this uh, poly stain um, it's a cla classic oak um, and so you know you can get like different kinds of stains I chose this classic oak uh, I wish I had gone a little bit darker um, as you will see in the video but uh, this is what I have so I'm gonna use it um, you also want to make sure that you have some brushes um tape of course your door hanger whatever you're going to be designing to hang on your door um, a stencil and this is optional um i printed out the word hello and i have this transfer paper uh but usually i freehand a lot of my work but for those of you that you know don't like your handwriting or don't want to freehand that's what this is for and you'll see later so let's get started so first step i'm going to be taking a foam brush and i'm just going to begin to paint my surface and again i'm using that classic oak stain um i wanted a darker stain however um like i said i'm just going to use what i already have now the first step i'm just going to be taking the brush and i just follow along the grain line and i just begin to paint in a up and down work motion here um now being that i did want a darker stain i painted a second coat however it wasn't completely dry so you want to make sure that if you're going to apply a second coat you want to make sure that it's completely dry before you begin to add another coat and you'll see why in just a second So here's my surface with the second coat of stain and as you can see it's not as smooth as when I finished it with the first coat but nonetheless I continued to persevere. So now what we're going to do is I'm just kind of tapping around to make sure that my surface is completely dry this time. You want to make sure that it's not sticky to the touch. Once it's completely dry we're ready to begin to add our design. So I'm just taking a piece of tape here and I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want the tape to go. I want it to be as close as possible, um, you know, in the center. to get my stencil and I'm going to lay it where I want the design to go now as you can see it's not covering the full um, you know surface that I want to do but that's okay because once I paint this part I'm going to lift it and move it to the other section so I'm just laying it on here getting it where I want it to go and then I'm just gonna get some tape and begin to tape it in place before I add that paint Now I'm going to get my paper plate and I'm going to get my paints 
and I'm just gonna begin to add those paints to the paper plate. Um, you can use any colors that you like. Again, I'm using acrylic paint and I'm just prepping up my colors um, to get ready to apply. So you see me here removing the stencil because I noticed that there was some debris and so I just took a dry brush and just kind of scraped away all of that those you know that debris and particle that was on the board because you want to ensure that it's completely clean and ready for painting so that the acrylic adheres and so I'm just going to place it back on here and now we're really ready to begin the painting. So now I'm going to take my other clean foam brush and I'm just going to choose the color and then I begin to dab those colors into the stencil. And I like to use the dabbing technique because that kind of helps the paint from getting underneath the stencil. So I just begin to dab everywhere that I want those colors to go. Now once I completed adding the paint, I went over some areas another time just to make sure that the colors pop and really adhere to the board. So you see me kind of going through adding a second coat of paint um, in this process. And now it's time for the first part of the reveal and I'm loving the way it looks so far. And once that section dries, I add the stencil again to begin to add that other part of the design. Here, and what I have here is I have my hello printed out and I have my transfer paper. And I'm going to take my transfer paper. There's a glossy side and there's a matte side. I'm going to lay it down on the glossy side. Now I want my, I'm putting it closer to this side. Now you could put it wherever you want. You could, if you want the hello to start like here, or if you want it to be centered, put it in the center. But I think I want mine to be a little off center, more to the right. And I'm just going to, and I left the tape on because I'm kind of using that as a guideline for where I want, you know, the hello to go. And I am just going to see, kind of feel around. There's the edge. I want to get it as close to the edge as possible. Like so. Yeah, that's good. I don't want it right here. And, um, you know, you may even want to make sure that you print it a good size, but I think I'm going to be all right with that. And then, now all I'm gonna do, I think that's good. Now what I'm going, and then, to be honest with you, you know what I can do? Just fold this. Okay, there we go. Now I'm talking. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is just take a pencil and I am going to trace 
over the word. I know a lot of people use crickets, but, and I have a cricket, but I just, me, I just prefer to hand paint. That's just what I like to do, but feel free to do whatever works for you. And I just, I don't know. I just feel like over time that vinyl is going to kind of come off. All right, so as you can see, it kind of went through there and there we have it, just like that. And now, and that's a little small for me, but I think once I start to add the paint, it'll look much better. So now I'm just gonna get me some black paint. I wanna do the writing in black. Once I have my black paint, I'm gonna take a thin um, paintbrush and I'm just going to begin to outline the letters. Now, if you know anything about calligraphy, you'll know that there are thick and thin strokes in the topography. However, that is a conversation for a whole nother day. So just do it to the best of your liking. So as you can see now, the hello is complete and it is dry, but I still wanted to add a thin line um, to my design. And so I added another piece of blue tape above the blue line that was already there. And I just began to, um, again, using the dabbing technique, I dabbed some paint um, because I wanted a thin line stroke there. So here we go. So we are just about ready to add our bow. So we wanna go ahead and get our glue gun to be warmed up. So go ahead and get that plugged up so that it is ready. So as you can see here, I have painted my line and I'm about ready to go ahead and lift that tape up. So here I am carefully removing the tape and I'm just kind of pulling in a downward motion but you will also notice that the tape is also lifting some of the paint from the hello. So I'm going to go back and just kind of paint over that, um, paint in those spots. But hey, it's all a learning experience. So as you're watching me, you'll learn what not to do. And I'm also just going ahead and lifting that tape away and... I am absolutely in love, 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 love the way this looks. I love the color scheme of it all. And yeah, looks good. All right, so as you can see, I added that black, black paint to the hello to bring it back to life. And now I am ready to add my bow. Now guys, 
the bowl is not for the wheat. It took me uh, several times to get that bowl right and I ended up not even using the hounds tooth because I just thought that the colors, it was just too much all at once. So I'm not going to give a step-by-step -step on how to do the bow here, but I will do a separate video for that. So I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through all of this. Um, and so you can get ready to see the final result. Now this is where I began to take that rope ribbon and use to tie the different color uh, ribbons together or bows that I had together. And I just used it to kind of wrap around and wrap around to keep that together. So that's where that rope ribbon comes into play here. So at this point, you just kind of see me playing around with it, getting it to my liking. And once I got it to my liking and I like the placement of where it's gonna go, I added glue to the ribbon and then I'm just going to place it in the center of my board, my door hanger. And finally, I'm gonna take some scissors and my rope ribbon and I'm gonna cut maybe about three inches of it and I'm just gonna tie it in the hole at the top of my door hanger and it is complete. Hey guys, so I just wanted to share a couple of takeaways that I realized during the process of making the door hanger. Um, first of all, I completely forgot to shellac mine because I was so excited of how awesome it turned out. I just completely forgot and I was so ready to hang it up, so I forgot. But my mom, she wanted me to make her a door hanger, but what you guys should know is that instead of using acrylic paint for the wording, I used a black Posca marker for her wording. So when I began to shellac it, the marker, it started to smear, okay? So what I would recommend is using a black um, Sharpie. And I found this um, from my local craft store and um, this is oil based. And so once it's smeared, I had to respray paint it, all of that good stuff. And this time I did the wording um, in this instead. Also, what I would recommend is instead of shellacking the project, I would use this Krylon uh, UV resistant clear acrylic coating. Um, it works well on a lot of different types of surfaces, um, you know, artwork, painted surfaces, wood, metal, so on and so, so forth. So I would use this instead because I noticed when I use the shellac, even though it says that it's clear, it kind of left like a really light brown tint that I didn't like. And it just, to me, it made it look dingy and I didn't like that look. So I would recommend using this uh, to protect the surface and that way it's clear. You can purchase this in a gloss if you want it really, really shiny or if you like the dull look, I would get the matte. Um, so I will use that instead. And so those were my two takeaways from doing this DIY project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do um, redo this DIY project, please let me know in the comments. Tag me on Instagram at it was all a dream. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be posting every week. And like, comment, share, subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time.